Last December, uh, during final season, I was in an elevator and a black couple walked in with me. They were laughing hysterically and I smiled to myself under my mask because COVID. And I realized that I hadn't laughed in quite some time, but final season will do that to you. So I wasn't too worried. The couple was talking about what they were going to eat and which restaurant they were gonna go to. And they instinctively just turned to me and asked, uh, do you know any nice places in the city? Like, are you familiar with the area? And I said, no, I just moved to New Orleans to start law school and I'm not really familiar with the area. The moment I said law school, they looked at me with a mixture of shock and awe and admiration and I felt instantly uncomfortable. <laughs> but with that discomfort, I answered all of the questions that they had about my experience. Soon the elevator opened and they got off on their floor. And the man turned back at me and said, I'm so proud of you, hang in there. It's important for people who look like us to be in those spaces. I smiled politely because that's what you do. And the elevator went up to my floor. And as I was putting my key in the lock, I was thinking about what that man had said to me. And I thought about everything that it took for me to get to the point where I could say that I'm a law student at Tulane. And for the purposes of the speaker series today, the theme of that series is a diamond in the rough. And I instinctively thought about myself, call it selfish or self-absorbed, but that's just the reality of the way my brain was working at the time. So this is my, you're probably wondering how I ended up here story. And if you're not wondering, just pretend for the purposes of me speaking to you today. I guess that journey for me started as an undergrad student in Auburn. I entered Auburn as a political science major, which tracks considering I'm in law school, but I was pre-med. And I know that sounds crazy, but I was interested in medicine at the time. But after I lost my first battle and then my second battle with organic chemistry, I decided that maybe it was time to switch things up and take another route. I figured that if the classes were going to be challenging, I should at least be interested in them. So I switched over to a pre-law track. But that kind of took such a long and difficult turn because I was also in ROTC training to be a member of the United States Air Force. So <laughs> I had to talk to my commander as well as my academic advisor. And getting my commander to approve that change as a junior in undergrad was kind of a lengthy process. But eventually I got that done and I moved on to the next step of that journey, which was to meet with our university's pre-law advisor. Hold on to the fact that I did say organic chemistry didn't go so well. <laughs> so when I walked into the meeting with my pre-law advisor, she took a look at my transcript and chuckled ever so slightly. And I immediately knew that this meeting was not gonna go well at all. So she basically decimated any dream that I had of getting into law school and told me that it was probably best that I go another route. So I decided that that would be my last time meeting with a pre-law advisor because that's just the kind of person that I am. And I went forward and said, I'm going to do the best I can in all of my classes and I'm gonna to apply to law school. So I did that. I applied to seven law schools and faced seven rejections. But you know, nothing like that's gonna shake my confidence. And I decided that the best thing to do in that situation was to just hit the ground running and apply to seven more schools. And I had a bit of a better outcome. I got two acceptances and I was on two wait lists. Coincidentally, Tulane was one of the schools that I was on the wait list for. So as much as I wanted to go to school here, I didn't have such high hopes. But I made sure to contact the Office of Admissions every two weeks to ask about my status all through the summer. August came and I decided that I probably should not be waiting on Tulane to get um, a decision from them. 
So I accepted an offer from a school in North Dakota and was set to move 21 hours away from where I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama to go to law school because I decided as an undergraduate student that that was my dream. And for me, this journey was about trusting the process. So I just decided that the process was worth trusting. The day before I was supposed to move to North Dakota, I got a call from none other than Tulane University saying that I'd been admitted into law school and I would received a scholarship as well, which blew my mind. But I had already paid seat deposit for the school I was going to attend. I had already put down first month's rent and a security deposit on a great apartment that I was excited about living in. But I told my parents and we decided that instead of driving to North Dakota, I was gonna make the trip to New Orleans the next day. So I woke up at 5 a.m. in the morning with my mom because family support is everything, and we drove down. We toured the campus, we met with the admissions office and talked about what my options would be. We left that meeting fully intending on me to go to school here. And then the hunt started for a place to live. As I'm sure so many of you know, with prices of inflation skyrocketing, housing in New Orleans is insanely expensive. So we searched and searched and searched for the week that I was here before orientation, and we couldn't find anything that was within our price range. And I think that's one of the things that a lot of students worry about coming into higher education is just how costly these things are. So as I searched, I went through Facebook group after Facebook group, roommate situation after roommate situation. All of my roommates had dropped out or said that they had found other places or other people to room with. And I was beginning to get discouraged. I went back home and decided that I had to come back for orientation because it was mandatory. But every waking moment, of that time, I was searching for apartments, meeting with realtors, meeting with potential roommates, and trying to get everything figured out. And I was so grateful for that opportunity because I needed a place to stay while I was here. And there was a family in the city that had three young kids all under the age of six that took me in and let me stay with them while I was searching. And I'm so grateful that I had that because that's not an easy thing to do when you have a family of your own. But while I was staying with them, I continued to search for apartments. So while I was staying in their home, I attended law school orientation, and I also attended my first week of classes. During that first week, that was probably the hardest point in the journey. I'm telling myself to trust the process. I'm telling myself to have faith but nothing is going the way I wanted it to. So I sat in the car one day, and it was pouring rain, because that's what it does in New Orleans, as I've come to learn, and I just cried. I was like, this is not working out. <laughs> Nothing's going the way I want it to. And a song was playing on the radio. It's called Psalm 23 by People in Psalms. And the chorus of the song that I was so connected to in that moment said, Hallelujah, I am not alone. So I dried my tears, called the realtor and told him I'd be 30 minutes late because I'd wasted time crying, and met with the realtor, found out the apartment was awful, but still in high spirits, I went back home that day and attended class in the morning. If you're familiar with the first week of classes in that year, you know that it ended with a hurricane coming into the city and school closing. So that meant that I had to leave and go home to Birmingham for six weeks. And during that six weeks, hopes of finding an apartment was very bleak, considering the city was shut down, no one was working, and everyone was worried about the lives of people as they rightfully should. But that meant that for so many of us law school students, and for me personally, I was having to go through that first semester of law school at home and not in the classroom environment. So I was searching for a roommate on Facebook and online as I had been, but not finding much luck. After about four weeks of staying at home, I was set to come back to New Orleans in two, 
one of the roommates that had previously dropped out of our housing arrangement called and said, hey, I found a place that I think you would really, really like. Do you think that it would be a possibility for us to still room together? And I said, absolutely. Was I still slightly upset that she had dropped out of our roommate agreement previously? Yes, but I made it work. And we moved into an apartment together, and that's the apartment that I've been living in since I moved back in full time in October. So for me, this journey of becoming a law school student here at Tulane was simply about trusting the process. Who would have thought that I would go from being a pre-med major to being rejected by a pre-law advisor to being rejected by 12 different law schools to being where I am now? So the message that I want to get across to you today is to trust the process. So many things look like they're not going to work out. And eventually, as you have faith, as you work towards the, your goals and the things that you want to achieve, they end up working out and making you proud of yourself for hanging in there. So many people start this first step in the life of adulting, choosing their path in higher education. And that is very, very difficult, as it was for me. So I stand before you today as a black woman, as a first-generation immigrant from the South. A lot of identifiers that society says should be black marks to say that I shouldn't be standing where I am today and ask you to trust the process. Thank you.